the lion opened its strong arms and pounced on a man. Strangely enough that the lion is not attacking the man but hugging him. What has happened to make that this fierce lion look like a good kitten in front of the man? Is there any secret story between the man and the lion? We all know that the lion is a very fierce feline. They have strong bodies and sharp teeth. We often see them on television in all their fierceness. But a lion as docile as this is a rare sight. The enviable friendship between the lion and the man can be felt in front of the screen. This touching friendship dot stems from a rescue and fostering that lasted 10 years. Many years ago, next to a small town in Botswana, an African country dot a rancher named Willie opened a hotel named Grassland Visitors. Although this is a hotel, the occupants here were not human but a group of carnivores who had blundered into the local livestock area. According to local law, local herders are allowed to hunt wild animals to protect their property. But the good Mr. Willie thought this was too cruel. So he opened this hotel. Whenever there was a wild animal intrusion into someone's home, they could call in Mr. Willie's team to catch the animal. The team would give animals necessary rescue treatment. When they were healthy again, they would be released back into nature. But Mr. Willie's team was not a professional rescue team after all. His original plan was to release all the animals. So he didn't neuter them to begin with. As a result, one lioness gave birth to a litter of cubs in the hotel. Sadly, only one cub from the litter survived and was abandoned by its mother. Such abandonment of children is common among lions in captivity. Because the lioness feels she cannot hide her cubs, the cubs may pose a great danger, but the problem was that Dot Mr. Willie was not in a position to raise the lion cub, therefore. The cub had only two options Dot either released back into nature and killed by other lions Dot, or be euthanized by humans. Fortunately, it was at this time that the cub met Valentine. Valentine was also an animal advocate. He came to the area actually for a wildlife camp project which invites visitors to experience the tough side of wildlife survival. After hearing about the fate of the lion cub, he found Willie Da and brought the cub to him. He said he would do his best to raise the lion cub, more importantly, that not as a pet, that but let it grow up as a beast. He named the lion cub Essilia. So began a 10-year friendship between the man and the lion. Let's not talk about how a human can impart wildness to a lion. Valentine's most immediate problem was to feed the lion cub. Luckily, Silja had shown itself to be a king from an early age. And it was a dominant milk drinker, never picky about its food. Every time Silja finished its milk, IT would crawl around on Valentine excitedly, embracing his head and licking it. Slowly, that Silja got into the habit of hugging Valentine. Every time Silja was happy she would hug Valentine tightly, after it grew up and even became a full-fledged beast. It still kept this habit, asking Valentine for a hug whenever it's happy. Silja may seem so close to Valentine, but in reality it is not friendly to all humans. Its friendship only exists for Valentine. To keep his promise, that Valentine took Silja. To settle in the Kalahari Desert in Africa as soon as it was weaned, IT was to ensure that Silja would not come into contact with humans and human made products. After moving to live in the desert, Valentine played and had fun with Silja. Every day, training in and hunting techniques. By the time Silja was 16 months old, IT finally, with the help of Valentine, managed to hunt a red heart beast that had been weakened by the drought. Valentine could finally rest easy. Silja still belongs to nature. IT had not lost its wildness. Since then, Valentine has followed Silja around, expanding their territory in the desert, playing with it, and training it in various skills. Silja had grown up so fast. From a tiny little cub into a big, powerful beast, Silja is unfamiliar with humans and is wary of everything. But when it comes to Valentine, IT never changes and is always the same big, cuddly cat. Point ten years of companionship that have long since made the man and the lion. A close family across racial boundaries, today Valentine is still working on Silja's better life. He wants to give Silja the closest thing to a natural life. Of course, there are many good people like Valentine, 
who are dedicated to animals, for example, Victoria, below, rescued a black panther named Luna. The story took place many years ago. A pregnant female cheetah gave birth to a litter of cubs in a Russian zoo, but an unusual youngster had appeared among them. IT was not like its fellow siblings. IT has a black fur coat. Because its coat was different from its other siblings, that Luna the panther was mercilessly abandoned by its mother. By the time it was found by the staff, that little Luna was already on her deathbed. The zoo staff then handed Luna over to Victoria, who has 12 years of experience in caring for fierce animals. Later, the zoo staff felt that Luna was too weak and needed constant attention. IT would be difficult for it to grow up healthy in the ZOO.SO they decided to sell it. Victoria was very worried. When she heard that the zoo was going to sell Luna, she was afraid that no one else would be able to take care of the frail panther CUB.SO she decided paid to keep Luna herself, little Luna, brought home by Victoria. IS simply spoilt by Victoria. Perhaps it was because she wanted to make up for the fact that Luna had not had a mother to look after it since it was a child. As little Luna grows up, it became more and more mischievous and lawless, making a mess in the house every day. So Victoria decided to let one of her own Rottweilers, Wea, teach Luna. Luna soon became very obedient and knowledgeable under Wea's tutelage and company. Just like that, Luna the Panther has grown up happily and healthily. Under the unfailing care and love of Victoria and Wea the dog, Luna is now very human-friendly. IT has a very docile personality, like a big, docile cat. It's just too cute. With current human development, humans' activities continue to encroach on wildlife. Releasing animals back into nature is becoming increasingly difficult. Wild animals are flesh and blood. Dot, and they know what it's like to feel pain and suffering. Animal life is also worthy of reverence. We should start to protect the ecological environment around us. So that we can also protect the wildlife. The protection of animals is in fact a disguised form of protection for ourselves. Dot, of course, that protecting animals does not mean sending them to zoos or sanctuaries. That kind of protection can be useful. But it also has disadvantages in some respects, for example, it can cause animals to lose their original wildness and thus their ability to survive in the wild. We should try to find a new way to protect animals.